obviously yeah. and of course it's different uh, music could be or a song could be two and a half minutes that's right our movies is one and a half right. hour yeah uh, so of course um I think sort of the, the comparison with Spotify is very much around the business model yeah. and the go-to-market strategy. Then of course the products are totally different, uh, Spotify are great at what they're doing. Um, so. mm -hmm. I think if you're, for some, you name the, the Spanish market, yeah. uh, for example, of course they, had, they don't have the internet penetration as in Sweden, mm -hmm. but if you look in the metropolitan areas of Barcelona, Madrid, and all the other major cities, they have a fantastic infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, so that's no problem. But uh, I was very, very happy, I tested last week uh, in Sweden where I've launched uh, one of the ISPs called Telian, have launched the LTE network, the 4G network, Right. and we tested Boulder running on the, uh, on the LTE network, fantastic customer experience, Right. And you can really bring your laptop anywhere, outside, everywhere, and you can actually watch a HD movie wirelessly uh, on on the network. Wow! And of course, that's a fantastic customer experience. Yes. And I think that's sort of a uh, sort of a smaller glimpse of a hacker who will look in two three years. Two three years. Where yeah. you, will it be the LTE network? Will four G network will be publicly available everywhere? Yeah. It's quite a lot. Mm. Uh, even if you can say that a normal laptop today has yeah. a 250 sure. gigabit hard drive. Sure, yeah. Although people quickly fill it up with all kinds of things. But of course, they yeah. fill it up with illegal downloaded yeah. content. That's it, yeah. Um, but the, the 13 gigabit is actually that we, we say that actually we, we ask the customers to, to get access to 10 gigabit. And right. the 10 gigabit we use actually to, um, to store the different copies of the movies out in the peer to peer network. Right. Okay. The, the last three gigabit is actually used to buffer the movie when you actually start watching the movie. So when you start watching the movie, we actually start the buffering of the whole movie. It's buffering during the adverts. Th that it starts on the adverts yeah. and then of course uh, half into the movie you, mm. you have buffered a little yeah. bit. And of course that is to, to cater for if there's an error in the wireless a connection in your home or if mm. your diesel modem needs to restart or if there's any other mm -hmm. things. To ensure the quality of service that you expect for a, a mm -hmm. service as bottler, you use sort of the buffering technique. Mm -hmm. They have done a fantastic job. Uh, yeah. They are uh, there's few companies that have actually managed uh, such a success uh, as Spotify have done. Mm -hmm. And of course, if we can even come close to what that hap what they have actually achieved, uh, we will we'll be extremely happy. Mm -hmm. We're in a good way, uh, but yeah. we have far away to go before we can be as good as the spot of are. Okay. And of course part of that success is going to be attracting enough advertisers to make it profitable. What has been the response of, of, of advertisers so far? How, have you had any problems trying to attract them? Or? No, it, it, it actually goes very, very good. We have now full, five fully employed uh, media sales guys mm -hmm. actually selling media. Uh, I think we have one thing that is a little bit better than Spotify is that we can our advertising, in fact, it's, it's a different environment. It's, it's not radio commercials. It's actually TV commercials mm -hmm. or cinema commercials. Mm -hmm. And cinema con uh, commercials, uh, it's, a, it's a better uh, what's it, customer. Uh, you understand the message much better, etc. So it's a easier to actually to sell sort of a, mm -hmm. a fantastic advertising. Uh, experience instead of actually just a radio commercial and potentially far more lucrative. So, yeah. so that of, of course they help the business model. Yeah. Then saying that, of course, it is very different to to into uh, to sort of broadcast commercials every third or four minutes or five minutes uh, as a radio does mm -hmm. uh, compared with actually saying broadcasting a, a movie for one and a half hour without any commercial breaks. Mm. Uh, I think it comes back to sort of the the glory days of the new millennium when there was a lot of internet uh, yeah. entrepreneurs in, based out of Stockholm mm -hmm. uh, a, a early understood what sort of could be done on the internet and I think of course when the, the crash came uh, everyone repositioned themselves yeah. and now sort of they're, they're coming back of course the mm -hmm. same uh, same people or, or people that have got inspired by the Swedish success around the millennium. But now a lot more stable and a lot stable more serious. Stable and, and, yeah. and, and I think that's, that's why Skype came, that's why Spotify came, that's why yeah. other servers came, that's why Bobbeck came, it's, it's from the heritage of being internet pioneers.
Absolutely. We actually started already, or we will start a project on one of the platforms. I can't mention what platform. Mm -hmm. uh, that, of course, we are developing. Then, of course, we have uh, some limitations on the mobile side of actually using it as a peer-to-peer -peer network and actually streaming two and a half megabit of, of great uh, movies. Uh, but I think that we are watching on the model now, or investigating the model actually. What can it bring? Can it bring that you can I watch my friends' activities? Can I? watch trailers, can I watch uh, small clips of the movies, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, of course, it, it will come to the mobile platforms by, by summer or so. At the moment, the uh, the Windows version of Vodla is a beta, and the yeah. Mac is, is alpha, as we speak at the moment. Yeah. When do you think the, the final release will be of, uh, of both versions? It's, it's, uh, of course, we had that in, in the plan later this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, we will do we listen very much to our end users in the fall. Sure. Uh, we sort of uh, had a lot of customer uh, investigations. We we met with customers. We sat down with customers, mm -hmm. asking them uh, what do they like about the products, what mm -hmm. what do they need to change, etc. Mm -hmm. And they are the sort of the developments in the in the technical pipeline right now as we speak. Okay. And these are sort of the things coming in March. Right. Um, so uh, along with the the desktop. So the desktop and yeah. the web time. So we sort of bringing that in, of course, of the. The sort of limitation is that we, sort of, we went for the box and we went for the TV environment and therefore sort of the ha whole car was to have uh, a remote control yeah. uh, controlling the movies and course, not a, yeah. a mouse uh, control. Mm -hmm. and of course, we listen to our users and we will now in our new uh, desktop client and web client, of course, launch yeah. with, with mouse. Which is good. That's the whole aim of, of having a beta product is to, so to listen, to listen, listen and, and learn. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, some some people sort of hide behind the beta uh, stamp and say, oh, it's in beta. It wasn't really ready, but yeah. it's launched as a beta. Mm -hmm. We have worked very close with our customers of actually investigating what do they really want and how do they use the service, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and try to learn of what limitations are there in their ISPs, uh, DSL modems, or their antivirus programs, or other plugins on, on their stationary desktop PCs. Mm -hmm. that we can sort of learn and work, work together with. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the moves actually we are doing, uh, sort of launching a new uh, web version, is of course to, to make it easier for us to do integration with Facebook mm -hmm. or, or similar, similar social networks. And that will obviously be a lot easier with the web client, presumably, in March. Exactly. Yeah. Sort of, yes, it's easy to connect sort of, to the Facebook Connect service. Yeah. Uh, of course, if I watch a lot of movies and if I review movies, I want to know about. I want to tell that to my friends or my peers yeah. in my social networks. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, that sort of a it's, a it's a logical next step for us. Absolutely, we're looking yeah. into that. If if we look on our customer forum, yeah. there's a lot of sort of customers wishing us to integrate uh, with with, for example, uh, the Internet Movie Database. Yes. So yes. Of course, we will do that. I really uh, wish all 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 your readers uh, actually go to our customer forum and sign up uh, for and and leave their great comments of how they want to develop the product, uh, problems they found, mm -hmm. how they can make it even better, tips and tricks of other people. Uh, I personally read them myself and go through the ID section mm -hmm. uh, to to find things. Mm -hmm. I and mean, yesterday night I saw some great uh, some great uh, posts about how the, is it possible for us to do uh, DLNA support okay. uh, of actually doing sort of DLNA servers to TVs or Xbox or PS3s, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. That is sort of great advice and suggestion on technical solutions that comes up on the customer forum. Okay. So, well, keep, keep posting the posts. Well, we will, and I'm sure yeah. if you give us a few beta invites, you'll get a lot of response. <laughs> oh, <for her. laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Matthias. It's been very thank interesting. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you.